What up, what up, what up? Early morning, early morning for everyone. Um, you know what I'm going to do? Just going to let Instagram send out that notification. Get that algorithm going. Let people know I'm going live with another special guest. Out of Arizona. You know, Barbara June. Uh, I just want to say I've been honored and I've been blessed to keep this run and keep it going. Have so many amazing people come to my platform, speak, share their journey, share their growth. You know, Instagram, social media gives you the persona of like what's going on now. And we all see everybody, you know, doing amazing things. And that's what we want to see. We want to see the positive, the energy, the growth to keep us motivated, to keep us like I can reach that. But sometimes we miss the middle ground of how to get there. You know, the ambition, the, the time, the sweat, the tears, the journey, you know, the journey. And, you know, I've been blessed to have so many large people in this industry come on. And share their journey, share how it started, where it begun, uh, what it took, you know, the late nights, the early mornings, you know, just the the continuous of understanding that this is not going to happen in a short time frame that I'm going to have to put in the work, the steps to climb that mountain. And this is what Talk Your Barber Shit is all about, just to continue to grow, to continue to level elevate everyone's you know growth in this industry and it doesn't just have to be about barbering it also somebody can look at this platform and take so much from it and go you know how can i apply this to what i'm doing and you know that's what it's about you know just giving that helpful role to keep pushing and keep grinding and understanding so you know like i said i'm blessed to have this fella because you know, I've been looking at this platform, have used some of his content to help push my other page, you know, Garcia the Barber, you know, you know, just taking tactics of what he has done to, you know, draw people in and see what we're doing. And, you know, I know one of our videos he saw, he, you know, he gave me thumbs up on it. So now to have him on this platform and have him share his journey, his truth and his wisdom is truly a blessing. So I see him on now and let's get to it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's going on, brother? Printless. <laughs> let's go. Hey, man, I just want to say thank you to, you know, be on here, to take your time out of your busy schedule to sit with me and, you know, just unload so much information that you're going to do today. But it's truly a blessing. I'm, I'm very honored to have, um, you know, I've been watching your platform from this um, platform that I have, but also my own personal page. And, you know, what I um, shared earlier, you know, I use some of your videos to kind of like elevate my page, and, you know, show different content, show a different personality of myself. But um, I've been loving everything that you're doing. And, you know, I see you in the Las Vegas Expo. I think we got a chance to kind of chop it up a little bit. But, you know, just now to really have you on here and share your wisdom, it's truly a blessing and an honor. So. Just... Hold on, brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. For real. <laughs> yeah. So let's get to it, man. Let's let's jump into it. Um, you know, this platform, I know a lot a lot of people come to me and like, you know, why did you name it Talk Your Barber Shit? You know, why did you put the shit on it? You know, why you know, sometimes I they want to come on my platform but they feel like, you know, the verbiage that I use on Talk Your Barber Shit is maybe not fitting their realm. But the reason I said talk your barbershop is not to belittle the industry. It's not to belittle anybody that's in the industry. It's just the platform where we can talk our truth and share our journey and share what it is to elevate ourselves in this industry. And I just want to hear you, you know, share your journey and what it took you to get where you at. Because we look at everything that you're doing now, but it's a lot of people that's coming up in, the, in these trenches and they're like, you know, how do I get there? What do I need to do? And, you know, we always hear, you know, just put your head down and keep moving forward. 
And sometimes that can be the, the answer, but sometimes it takes more than that. And I just yeah. want to hear from you, like, what what was it when you first got into this industry? What what elevated you to say, you know, I want to take a chance in this industry? Like, was it family? Was it just yourself, persona? Like, what was it? Yeah, man. So basically for me, when I first started, man, it was I just needed to be somewhere. I, I was working at a bank. I've said this many times in a lot of podcasts is um, I was working at a bank and I just didn't like how my whole life was controlled around this company. And knowing that this company at any split moment, they can just go ahead and just lay people off. And that scared me because I'm a young father. Well, my wife was pregnant. I have a mortgage. And it's just knowing that my life is in someone else's hands. It's like it gave me, it scared me. So I needed to be in a position where I can be in control of that outcome, right? That I need to be in a position where um, I need to have a, a income work because at this job I'm putting so much energy so much time I'm getting up at five in the morning being on the road by six an hour and a half commute in traffic be there work eight nine hours a day and then another hour and a half of traffic so I'm putting money I'm putting uh, time I'm putting energy and I'm working for like you know 17 bucks an hour I'm putting so much into a job that this job is not really valuing me back so I was like if I'm putting this much energy into something I should be able to reap the full benefits. And so that's what started getting my mind changing. Where it's like, I need to, put, if I find a career that I can put my full energy in, that I can reap the full reward. And barbering was it. Barbering was it. So when you came to that decision, was it someone that you already knew that was in barbering that kind of was like, yeah, come over here? Or was it like, what was that turning factor to say, yeah, barbering might be my next. So, my next. so five years prior, about five years prior, um of becoming a barber um i was going to school i'm attending college um, i'm going to school to become a probation counselor and um, that was my route i wanted to become a probation counselor to help out troubled teens and i was volunteering i was almost done too and i was um, i was volunteering at a juvenile hall for a whole year um and uh, but five years prior to me coming to barber um a mentor of mine somebody a pastor of mine said uh you should be a barber and I said, nah, nah, I don't want to be a barber. I don't want to be a barber because um, I don't know how to give out dope fades. I love a fresh fade. I've been going to barber shops for years, but I just didn't know how to give that type. I could cut, but I just didn't know how to cut like that, right? I was giving out super cut cuts, you know, sports clip cuts. And, um, but I was like, nah, I can't. I was like, I don't know how to cut like that. And he's like, you can learn. So I just put that on the back burner, didn't really give it much thought. So fast forward, fast, fast forward, when I was thinking of a career change, that thought came to my mind. And I thought to myself, even though I don't know how to cut like that, uh, that grade or that level, um, I can learn. I know I can learn. I just, need to, I just need to put in the work. And so that's when I invested about like three to $500 and got a little startup kit and I started cutting in my garage. Like I actually took it serious. Like I wanna try and give that level fade, that type of haircut, a barbershop haircut. Well, how long did it take you to find the right schooling to help you, you know, transition and say, okay, this is the school for me that's going to help me elevate myself? I don't think I've ever found that school, right? Huh? <laughs> I, said, I, still, I don't think I've ever found that school. I still haven't found it. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I went with that question. <clears throat> because I, I know for a lot of, you know, people that come to my platform and, and, and you know, when I'm having these conversations with a lot of people like yourself and we speak on that, they say the same thing. So what is it that is, is missing in these schoolings that is not, you know, really helping these students really, because once you get out of school and, and I know it's saying, you know, once you get in the shop, it's the repetition, repetition, repetition. But how do you get to that before you get to, because when you get to the barbershop, you want to start making money. And you don't want to look at have people look at you and, and, and like, okay, he's not the one. It might be the owner that's okay, it's time to, you know, let him go or let him figure it out. Like what yeah. is it who is missing? Man, I, I think it's a catch twenty two, man. I think it's a catch twenty two because I don't think it's the full responsibility of the school mm -hmm. because I feel like it's both. I feel like I can't speak for every school. Mm -hmm. I only speak for a certain amount of schools schools that I've seen and I've experienced. Um, I just feel like there's no one in there really that's passionate about um, actually carrying that standard for 
Barbary. You get what I'm saying? And not only that, there probably are teachers or instructors or schools who do, but then also you have students in there who are not serious about barbering. That's true. Right? They're still in high school mode. Yeah. They're not really about actually elevating their craft and becoming a successful career. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just, you're at that weird age. There's at this age where there, there's, it's just, it's just hard. I think it's a, it's a hard transition. Barber school, that ground, that meeting point is a hard position because you have barbers who are not taking it serious, who come in late, who are acting like they're still in school, who don't have responsibilities, who still want to go out and smoke, who don't want to drink, who don't want to be professional, who don't want to be told what to do, right? And then that teacher or that instructor or that school is frustrated with that. And so they're doing the bare minimum. And it just, I just feel like it's just a, it's a hard, hard place to meet in the middle. Um, but I feel like now in our industry, I feel like now there are more professional, there are more barbers who are taking it more seriously and they're conducting their school and their program in a lot more professional way. It's a more serious course, and which is good. It's a, they're elevating the standard of barbering. So I don't want to put this on your shoulder, but you know, I'm going to use something like the high influencers in, the, in our barber game that are, you know, a lot of people are like looking towards as guidance. Do you think we should speak? more upon how to be more mindful and more focused in the school platform before you get in because I, I feel like now we speak on like how to elevate our social media how to elevate making more money but then we don't really speak on the education as much right absolutely yeah definitely we should focus on that elevating education right because there are groups of people there are there is a community a sub community within barbering people who want to attend those top-notch schools right and i also feel like this is another opportunity i talk about opportunity all the time how in the barbering industry it's so young there's so much opportunity there's so much opportunity for people to blow up and grow and have a successful business because there's so much opportunity right like education, like if you start to focus on the educational part and developing a business plan, a school where it's straight, it's straight professional, it's it's hiring, elevating, it's educating, people are gonna gravitate towards that. There's gonna be people who wants to go there and that opportunity for you can just take off, right? And um, cause I feel like barbering is so young, it's a long career, but I feel like there's so much more, it hasn't grown in years that there's so much opportunity for growth, mm -hmm. right? And so, but I definitely feel like we should focus more on education yeah. for sure. Um, I know something that um, that brought to my attention when, when you spoke to that, uh, being into, um, when you said like always not focus, it was on your platform, it was like not, not always focus on um, trying to grasp, and I don't want to say it wrong, try to grasp the, the opportunity of like, you know, get in there but just understanding the repetition that it, it takes to get there you know what i mean like just keep putting in the work and right yeah so if you want to speak a little bit on that it, it was something that i seen on your page that really you know grabbed my attention it was like you know we always focus on like trying to get there or, or, or trying to skip stages but not worried about the stages just keep the stages continually going till you right. get there. Yeah. yeah man i think that's just a principle of life man you can do whatever you want to do man just stay consistent and i know we use that word a lot we use that so much that buzzword stay consistent stay consistent but that principle is true if you keep practicing that you keep st staying consistent and doing what you've got to do and you know it's working it's gonna take off it's gonna take off and so if it's social media man keep posting don't don't say, oh, I got like, you know, only 13 views or I got 150 views. Uh, I'm going to quit because I only got 37 likes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, if you have that kind of mindset, then you're never going to stay consistent, right? But if you have a mindset, it's like, you know, I don't care about the views. I want to go ahead and put value. I want to elevate. I want to help somebody. So if I can help just one person, I did my part. Yeah. When you have that mindset, it's like, you know, I don't, I'm not doing it for the views. I'm actually doing it because I want to elevate. Mm -hmm. But when you start doing that, that's what it's going to take off because that's when people start gravitating towards it. People start liking it. People start loving it. They keep going. It's because your mindset is being positive and staying focused and want to elevate. You get what I'm saying? And so, and so that's what I mean by consistent, man. Don't just because there's been times, man, that I had to hit numbers and then my numbers fall down. And then not only that, my numbers start unfollowing people, unfollowing, unfollowing. Mm -hmm. Every day there's people unfollowing me every day. 
<laughs> people unfollow me. And if I let that determine my outcome or my mindset, I'll never continue to be consistent. Yeah. But it's like, I don't care about that. I don't care if you follow me, unfollow me, follow me. <laughs> I don't care. Do what you want. I want mean, people who are going to be on this platform are people going to enjoy the value of it. And so that's my, that's a mindset. I love it. I love it. Um, it's funny that you, you, you went in that angle because I was going to ask you, you know, one of my next questions, was it ever an if factor with anything that you was doing when you, when you took this journey into Barbara, like, I don't know if this is really, you know, the, the direction I should go. And I, like you said, I have a family. Is this going to prosper where I can take care of my household and, and the things that I want to do the next journey of my life? Not saying that, you know, you was trying to walk away from Barbara, but you maybe had different angles that you wanted to use from Barbara to get you where you wanted to go in other areas. Was it every moment in yourself like, okay, mm, I don't know, maybe I have to go back to the corporate world? No, never, never. Never, never. As soon as I uh, realized, because I'm making $17 an hour at the bank, right? And then when I hit my commission, when I did really good and I hit all my goals, um, I would make about like $20 an hour, $19 an hour every month. Every month I had it with my goal. So I was making about $20 an hour. In the Bay Area, man, at that time in 2008, man, it was that was good. Like, oh, you got a good job. Oh, you got a good job. Um, but I knew, and that was about like $120 a day. That's 120, somewhere around there, $120, $130 a day, uh, making 17 bucks an hour. And um, I would go home and I would cut hair for like, cut hair for like 10 bucks, 15 bucks. And I'll cut hair from seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I'll get six cuts in, right? Go to bed like around 12, 31, uh, cutting hair at 10, 15 bucks, 20 bucks. And I realized I made just as much as I did in those six cuts than I did working at the bank. Right. And I said, I'm only charging garage prices. I'm not even charging 25, uh, 20, $25 haircuts that I'm paying for. If I can go ahead and start charging barbershop prices, it's a no brainer for me. I've already made, so for my mindset, it was like, I just need to cut six heads a day at $25, and $25 a cut. Just, I just need six cuts a day and I'm happy. I can I can keep the level that I'm at, right? I can make my payments, I can make my mortgage. You know, we can we go out to we go out to eat. You know what I'm saying? I just need six cuts a day. And so um so for me, it was no looking back. After I did that, then I, I didn't even encounter in the tips or even growing more, cutting more people a day. And it's just it just grew. It just grew. Man. So I never looked uh, back. Never looked back. <laughs> when when is um how many, how many shops did you work at before you finally took ownership of your own establishment? Man, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so it's it, this gonna sound bad. It's not like I'm a barbershop hoe. It's gonna <laughs> sound bad. It's gonna sound bad. Um, the first two barbershops that I started at, um, the first two, they man, it was it was hood shops, man. It was hood shops. It was it was. Um, so I did the apprenticeship program. So I did, I was apprentice. And then once I got my license, um, so I had two and a half years of apprenticeship and I had to be signed off to a barbershop. So it delayed my thing because the first two barbershops they didn't even have a barbershop license. They told me they had a barbershop license. When they filled out my paperwork, they were sending it back to my school. So my school is telling me I didn't get approved. Like they didn't send it back. And I'm like going to the barbershop. Like, yeah, yeah, I sent it. Oh, okay, let me check. You know, they just, and they just didn't have a license. And um, so that delayed me. So that's the first two. Mm -hmm. Then I found one barbershop that I stayed there and I got my barbershop license with that barber. And so that was, um, that was uh, my third barbershop. Then I left that shop, uh, went to True Edge. True Edge, I was there. Um, and I thought that was going to be it. I said, from, from True Edge, I'm going to be, so my fourth barbershop, True Edge, my fourth barbershop, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to open up a barbershop after this. And, um, but we didn't like the area that we were living in. It was getting really bad gentrification from the Bay Area. It was just, and it was super expensive. Mm -hmm. So the house that we lived in, um, to make a long story short, I left, I moved to a different county about 45 minutes away in Vacaville. And so when I moved 45 minutes away, that was my fifth shop. Then being in Vacaville, the, the pandemic happened, right? And so we were like, yeah, let's move out of state. Um, and I was about to open up a shop then, but then I was like, you know what? Let's move out of state. So I moved out of state. And so then, yeah, man, so six barbershops. Okay. 
six so, barbershops before I opened mine. But then all, all those journeys of different locations, different shops, different owners, what is it that stood out the most to you? And what was something that she said, okay, you know, not even as a barber ownership, but something that you said that I didn't really want to carry on. I don't want that energy. How did you find that right core of, of, of like the barbershop that you did feel comfortable in? And then what was it something that you took from each of these barbershops to say, okay, when I open my barbershop, this is the energy that I want to give to. Yeah. So my mindset, I took, I, out of all the barbershops I've been to, I learned something from either if it's from cutting either it's the way you treat clients or either you don't treat clients i learned something from each barber shop and that's what helped me uh, so i felt like you know and that, and within that time frame that's been 10 years it's been 10 years so you know i've been in the industry for a long time i've been a barber for a long time so i after a certain amount of years you begin to see the rhythms you begin to see characters you begin to see what works and what doesn't work and so now i just feel like i just feel like for me, I just took a little bit of everybody, a little bit of a little bit of perspective from everybody, and made my own. Yeah. And so let's talk about more about uh, your. Yeah. So what I, what I look for for barbers, man, I look for character. I look for okay. character. I can't teach character. I can't teach character. I I can teach you how to cut. I can teach you how to get faster. I can teach customer service, right? I can teach. I can perfect, but character it goes a long way, man. It goes a long way. I, I like that you spoke on that because you know. For myself, I, I came from a lot of line of um, customer service, you know, you know, the younger jobs, you know, you do a lot of customer service. And when I got into the corporate work, I, I worked in finance and stuff. So you always got to deal with people, the conversation, the lingo that you have to have. Um, for those <clears throat> that are not per se, like cause that customer or there, there may be more internal than external. How do you try to find ways for them to be more comfortable being accepted, being uh, uh, Within the barbers? Yeah. Um, if you do something great, like, man, he can cut, he can do this, but then he just, like, so quiet, he doesn't know how to really interact. But you don't want to let him go because he, he can cut very well. Right. How do you right. I, I just feel like if you can cut and you're a little bit on the quieter side, I feel like um, you still can make it work. You can still make it work. Um, I don't, I'm not worried about it. You know I mean, if they're not really external, I'm not. I'm okay with not. Um, I'm okay with them not really being outgoing or super. You know I mean? as long as they're not rude, um, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. You know, what I'm saying so. Just don't be rude, um, but you don't have to always be talking and stuff like that, or always engaging. It's just that's who they are. That's their character, right? And I think what makes up for that is actually their cuts. Now, if you don't, if you're internal, right, and if you're not as external and your cuts are not there, you're going to have a rough road. You're going to have a rough road. Yeah. Right? Because I've known people, too, who where the cuts are not all that, but they're super customer service, they're friendly, people enjoy being around them, and they're doing well. Right? And yeah. that their customer service and their personality makes up for their lack of, ser uh, lack of cuts or service. For me, looking at you and the stuff that you have done, I felt like you very dominant. You, you know how to work. Uh, what is it uh, so much or how, how is it like it helps you in, in, in the per se of barbering to have a media page like you have? Like, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Oh. Yeah, you're breaking yeah. up my bad. What were you saying, brother? Uh, my, my bad. I'm going to repeat it for you. So being in the industry of, like, the social media world, how has it helped you in a way to, like, show more of, like, because I know now, like, with social media, we have to have, like, maybe a little storytell concept or a layout to draw people in. Like, when you found your niche in that area and it started to elevate for you, like, is that something that you feel like it takes away from your your other aspect as far as like showing people like the the barber world because you have to create so much of these different contents you know what i mean like you used to you're, you're talking about barbering but it's like you know now we're moving away from like the actual cutting and and, and showing like how to do you know layers and, and and face and stuff but now we have to like entertain do you feel like sometimes that can be more overwhelming 
for you? Uh, like, no, okay. not really. Just, they don't I feel like there's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just feel like there's so many other people who are doing haircuts. Why mm -hmm. not be different? Why mm -hmm. not showcase a different part of barbering? Like I just stayed in my lane, right? So there was again opportunity. Everybody, every barber is posting haircuts, haircuts, haircuts. Everybody wants to be a a a um. Everybody wants to be a um. A, on, on the stage, everybody wants a deal with cutting with scissors. Everybody wants to give out the dopest face. But barbering is so much more than just a dope haircut, right? What about the culture? People come to the barber shop because of the culture of the shop, because yeah. of the you know, and why not display that? So from my mindset was. And again, before I started posting my content, if you go back, all I had was haircuts. And Marvy Marr was like, there's more than just haircuts, right? So Marvy Marr was the one who actually, like, man, what lane can I get into that, that can showcase, that can still be barbering community, that can still be in that niche that I can do? And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to be myself. I'm going to showcase on the other side how it is in the barbershop, right, for barbers to relate to. And so that's, that's, that, that, that was my mind frame. Uh no, I get it, I, and and that's what drew me to your page. You know, to see the the right. because I from that environment, that that religion type of concept of the barber, the way the barber shop was, how it had so many different people in there. You had so many different life. You know, it, it changed. I don't know for your shop. I don't know if you still follow like you know the the guidelines of COVID, and you only have a certain amount of people in the shop or. Or did you go back to the the environment? Uh, he said no. <laughs> no, we never we never applied to the COVID guidelines. I gave COVID away. You know what I'm, <laughs> I'm not lying, bro. Not lying, bro. I felt bad. I felt bad, but I gave a couple few people COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I got a skit too, man. I got a skit that I haven't done that I I want to do. I got I got a skit that I'm trying to do. Um, but yeah. I, I, I love that you brought up Marvy Mar. Marv is definitely uh, someone I, I really enjoy, like what he brings to the table as far as like, you know, just the content, the barber and knowledge, the barber and lingo, the, you know, showing so many different aspects of like, you know, even when you was on there, you know, I watched that as well. Um, and he like, I, I, I like the verbiage and I love the way that he draws people in with so many different aspects of uh, as far as like, should you cut faster or should you right. do a $30 and all this other stuff like, like that. Like for you and you know, the stuff that you know, the bar me in your location and stuff like that. Are you in that direction where you, you feel like you want to, is everybody in and this question as far as like all the barbers in your location, the shops that's in your location, are you guys all, all on the same realm as far as pricing? Or you feel like everyone is still kind of like, oh, if he's charging 30, I'm going to go 20. You know, if he's charging 40. Oh, no. Yeah. No, no. We, we, we want to elevate. We want to elevate. So it's like, you know, if they going up, then we going up. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, let's go. Let's go. Because if you charge 30 and I charge 30 and dude down the street charge 30 and he charge 30, we're all charging 30. Right. right? And so why go down? I feel like there's so much clients you shouldn't, there's so many clients that needs haircuts. No one should be fighting over clients at all. No one should be upset because this client went and jumped in someone else's chair. Mm -hmm. There's so many people that needs to be cut, that needs service. There's so many people who are going to super cuts and great clips because they've never been in a barbershop environment. They've never had a haircut by a barber. And it's just, I just feel like there should be no room for hating, no room for competing, no room. There shouldn't be none of that, man, because there's so much, so much opportunity to gain clients, right? And so yeah. even if you're trash, people still, people are still making money with trash haircuts. It's crazy. <laughs> so why go down on your price, right? Why go down? So, yeah, so. Uh, okay, I love that. Because I feel like um, now, for me, you know, um, my closest uh, um, mentor, you know, was someone that cut my hair as a kid. So when I got a chance to jump in this industry, you know, I got a chance to work with him and, and I'm learning so much under him. Um, do you feel like, is that something that might be missing a lot now, especially with social media? Cause you know, people are more drawn into watching a lot more people on, on, on the internet than like have someone at the barbershop be their, more, their mentor per se. Like, did you have a mentor and did the mentor help you? Yeah, man. So I, I didn't have a mentor in barbering. Um, 
I haven't had a mentor. I, I no, to answer your question, yes. I feel like mentorship is missing. There's a lack of mentor. And again, it comes to another opportunity. There's people in this industry who needs and looking for mentors, but there's none that are available, right? So there's opportunity there to become someone's mentor. Um, second part of the question is, um, yeah, I, I, um, I've always been who I am. I've always been, this is who I am. Who you see on camera is who you see in real life. This is the real June that you're gonna get Barbara June. Um, but um, really what changed my mindset and actually getting on social media is Basio, Chris Basio. I joined his mentorship program because I knew I was opening a barbershop. And I wanted to make sure that I was mentored by somebody who knew how and does open up barbershop and who has opened up barbershop and knows how to open up a barbershop. So that's why I joined his course. Yeah. So I was thinking of it more from a business perspective, right? And, and I'm, I'm very, I gravitate for people who are very business savvy. And, uh, and so I, I've always been a fan of Chris Basio. And anytime that he showed up in my area, I, I made sure I attended his class. And um, so when he was offering mentorship program, then I was like, okay, I'm gonna jump into his mentorship program because I wanna make sure that I'm doing everything right when I open up my barbershop. Yeah. And that's really what changed my mind. He gave me a paradigm shift in my way of thinking on social media and barbering. And he just inspired me so much where when I got off, when I was in his mentorship class, I'm like, you know what? I'm jumping on social media because he's, he, one of the things he talks about is that you want to be that guy. If you're not that guy who's willing to mentor and to give value and to educate and help people around you, people are not going to want to work with you. Why do they want to work at your barbershop? What makes your barbershop so cool? Right. Right. <laughs> like, like you're not that guy. You don't know how to get clients. You're not him. Mm. Like you don't know how to build a business. You're not him. So why would other barbers want to work with you? You've got to be him. You've got to know how to build a clientele. You've got to know how to be business savvy. You've got to know how to market. Then that's when people want to be around you, want to work with you. You've got to be him. So it was just <clears throat> that kind of mindset where it's like, dang, bro, like I want to jump on that. I want, I want, I'm jumping on social media. Because I want my whole thing is I want it, I want other people, barbers in my area to see the type of person that I am and they want to work with me. You get what I'm saying? And social media is a great platform right. to display that. Yeah. I love um I love that. Cause you know what I want my next question, what I wanted to ask you was like how within your shop, how do you do you work I have a system where you're helping everyone in the shop as far as like growth? Do you do social media like platform for the shop? Do you do show, um, a layout or, or um, information that's being pre presented for the for the, um, your your? I want to say your workers, but your you know your, your, yeah yeah the staff. barbers my barbers yeah, yeah. the barbers and, and they're you know getting clientele they getting walk ins and stuff like that. Do you, um, do you focus more on the shop per se to help them walk, or do you help them? I focus. So I don't know if any of the barbers are on here. I saw a couple of them. Uh, let me see. It, are any barbers, any of the barbershops in here in the chat? I saw a couple of them. I want them to answer that just in the comments. Let's see if they can. <laughs> they, if they're not, that's fine. Uh, man, I focus on the barbers. I really focus on the barbers. I'm already busy. I, um, I'm, I'm super busy. I have a big clientele mm -hmm. base. Mm -hmm. And so now opening the barbershop, and one of the reasons why I didn't go up in my prices is because I didn't want to cut off all my clientele. Because when you raise your prices, you reach a level where only a certain amount of people can go ahead. But the reason I didn't raise my prices is because I wanted to make sure when I open up my barbershop, my overflow goes to the guys, right? I'm okay with the people, my clients leaving me and going overflow to my guys, to the other barbers. And so I've been doing marketing. Um, We've done, um, so there's there's three things that we focus on that I focus on since starting a new barbershop. Number one is guerrilla marketing. Guerrilla marketing is where we press up, we press up 4,000 flyers and we're passing out flyers. We go to the events. There's a truck and treat that just happened here in Queen Creek. And what we did is we paid for a venue uh, where we passed out candy. And not only did we pass out candy, we passed out business cards, four by six business cards of the shop all the information, and that's guerrilla marketing. We hit the ground, we pressed up about 4,000 flyers. We passed about about 1,500 to 2,000 flyers in that event. 
Um, that's 2,000 flyers, 1,500 flyers that we gave to people in our community that's in our town. So that's dual of marketing, number one. Number two is digital marketing, social media, and um, where we're doing videos, we're doing highlights, and I'm tagging all the barbers, and I'm telling people, make sure you follow these barbers. These are the new barbers. And number three is face-to-face, -face, uh, face -to -face marketing. Face-to-face -face marketing is you see somebody with a dope fade, and you give them a card, and you're like, hey, my man, like I'm a new barber in this area. Um, I like your haircut. Your haircut's dope. I said, if your barber is not able to get you in, uh, feel free to hit me up. I have some availability. And so that's face-to-face -face marketing. And you do that to people and you see people. I like to actually go, I tell my guys this, and all the information I have, I'm open with my guys because I, all I can do is just give them information. Right. And I tell them that. It's yeah. up to you to apply this information. I've been doing it and I know it works. I moved from one county and did it, built my, built my clientele up. I moved to a different hour away from my hometown i moved to our way and built my clientele then i moved from out of state all the way to a different state and built my clientele i know this works right and so face-to-face -face, uh marketing so we do guerrilla marketing we do digital marketing and face-to-face -face marketing and so and it works man it works no i i agree i mean i love that you you even share that because it, it helps you know individuals um, that are coming in the in industry or, you know, someone that uh, maybe been in the industry and they're trying to understand, like, can I still use this formula that you like you explained or how do do I just eliminate that and just jump to social media? I feel like we can still use all layers of how to interact. Like it doesn't just have to be jumping on the oh. Internet and making this. Like, you, you can still have that that communication that connection and, and that verbiage face to face right. as well. Yeah, so don't be afraid to get out in the world and 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 mix yeah. mix that all in. They, they always ask which one's better, digital or you know all of it. Yeah. All of it's better. All of it. You want to do all of it, <laughs> right? You want to do all of it. Like I I tell I tell the barbers, I said there there's other barbers who give better haircuts than me for sure. Their fades flawless, scissor work dope. Uh, but can you outwork me? Can you be more consistent than me? Can you be more professional than me? Can you be more, can you be more punctual than me? That's a different question, right? Back, back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, damn, I feel like we, we've been touching like on a lot of things. Um, what do you, what, what do you still like or feel like it's missing out of like um, the stage show pres presentation as far as like, you know, these seminars that we, we are able to go to? Like, I loved the Las Vegas one. Well, I haven't been, you know, since COVID and everything. I'm, I'm based out of Los Angeles. The last one I went to was the one in Queen, Queen Mary. And then I, I got a chance to hit up the Las Vegas one. Um, what was it that you, you enjoyed, you know, being, you know, back in that environment? And what was it that you feel like maybe need, maybe a little tweaking or, or something to add to it to help, you know, some of the younger barbers that's coming in, coming in? Man, I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's anything lacking. I mean, everything can always be better, right? Everything can always be better, man. But I get so much value going to these events. Um, I get so much going to these conferences and these expos because number one, they have educational, right? So they have people in there cutting sears. You have business products. Um, then you also have, um, you know. Um, you just have learning, right? That education in the beginning. And then you have the show where the vendors are there. Then the networking, people that you meet there, man, it's just the relationships that you build at these events. It's crazy. It's crazy. All the people, right? And so you have that, the networking. Not only that, then you have opportunity to create content. If it's some of that content that you're trying to do, that's a great location, a great place to start learning how to do your own content right and it's just it's just dope so i i, I you know I, I think it's dope man i don't i don't know if they need if they're lacking i feel like the smaller ones the smaller uh barber expos i feel like they could do better with getting actually more quality education right the okay. better quality of education right invest in that instead of investing in the other things i don't know i don't know though i don't know i haven't been to a lot of little ones so i really don't know yeah, yeah. Uh, but i just enjoy the whole expo scene um, you, while I'm there, I'm networking and build, making content. Do, um, when you're not too busy at the shop, do you try to uh, lend your time to like uh, schools and go talk to the students at the school and 
what is it that you feel uh, was positive about that and what you feel like, you know, it could be more helpful if, you know, we can have more or more maybe put, for um, people like yourself or maybe not, but just, you know, what is it that could tweak the, 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 the environment and, and help it a little bit more as far as like, you know, the school environment per se? Yeah, yeah man, that's how I found three of my barbers was at a barber school. Um, that's how I found three mm -hmm. of the barbers was at a barber school that I did, that I taught, that I spoke at. Um, but then again, it's like, I don't have tons of barber schools hitting me up and asking me to come either, right? So, and, and if they are, they're out of state. So it's like, it's gotta make sense. It's not like, you know what I'm saying? I just come out there and just leave, you know, for the weekend and then it just gotta make sense. And so, I don't know. So, but, um, but I do enjoy going to other barber schools and teaching and stuff like that. But again, I don't want to go there and, and just talk about how to give a dope fade. I'm, 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 I feel like there's so much more to barbering than just giving out a dope fade or how to do a shave. Like there's so much business aspect. There's so much work that goes into clientele, building you up as a barber, uh, how to market it how to build clientele, how to be better, be financially free, mm -hmm. how to don't spend all your money, things like that. There's just so much more than just how to give a dope fade. So I'm not interested in giving out haircuts or teaching people. That's why I kind of, in my social media, I really don't do a lot of those tutorials because I just feel like there's so many people doing that. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 there's so much more to barbering. Like why just focus on just haircuts? Mm -hmm. No. I don't know, what, and uh, I'm glad that you said it like that because what I meant was like that to go and speak on more uh, financial education, more, you know, not just go in there and have somebody sitting in the chair and you show them how to cut, but just right. like give them the real, yeah, the real information of like, you know, how to be financially structured when you go out there. Right. You know, always just put your, your money in your pocket and be like, okay, I got this money, let me figure out how to spend it, like how to save it, how to invest right. it. So I'm glad that you, you, you did share that and speak on that. Um, you know, I don't want to take too much of your time. Is there something that you feel like we missed that you want to share on your own that you want to, you know, speak to the audience that's watching? Um, I have one more question, but if it was something that you felt like you wanted to, you know, relay, you know, the floor is yours. No, no, man, we good. No, no I feel like we covered a lot. I feel like, you know, we vibing right now, man. We vibing. I'm having a good time. <laughs> I'm having a good time. Keep on coming. Keep We'll go. Okay, keep it coming. Um, uh, one thing uh, I I was noticing, and I'm I'm seeing a lot between the barbershop and the suite, and I feel yeah, like yeah. <laughs> the conversation and the and the 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 versus each other is so strong. Um, I want to say to anyone that you know they shouldn't you know take a a structure or, or take the advantage of, you know, leading out on that direction. Like, hey, you know, I don't, I don't see nothing wrong with me getting the suite and trying to build my clientele and, and doing it. But like you say, you have to have a marketing um, layout for that to really gravitate and really work. Um, but for me, knowing that what the barbershop brings, um, right. I think it, it's very helpful as well to, you know, maybe stay at a, a shop for maybe one or two years if it's comfortable and it gives you what you what you're looking for because right. i know you can shop and it can be very like depressing it, it'd be a lot of like stuff that you can deal with but on your end what would you share as far as like the difference between the sweet life the barbershop what would you say you know a person should do first or maybe you feel like hey whatever works for you works for you yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's my that's my take. Uh, I've done both. I've done barbershop. In this last two years of me cutting hair, I've been in a suite. So I've done both. I know I've experienced both. And, and you can make it work in a suite. You can make it work in a suite. But guarantee, if you are not doing, if you're not, so my thing is this, you can make it work in a suite. Anybody can make it work in a suite, right? Because there's other suites there. Like, so the suites that I'm in, there's other suites there. And so you get clients from other people in that suite. So girls who do hair, they get guys like, oh, I don't do guys' hair, but there's a barber here. He could do your hair. So you get, you can make it work, right, in the suites. My only thing is with the suites, you're going to outgrow that suite. You're going to outgrow that suite. So what's the next move? What's the next move? Are you going to open up two suites? You're going to open up three suites? Like now you might as well just open up a barbershop. So that goes back to my question. If what's your end goal? 
you've got to ask yourself, what is your end goal? Like, are you plan on being there? Do you plan on being there six, seven years in the suites? Because if not, you're going to be frustrated. You're going to be there five years and you're going to outgrow the suite and you're not really going to make any financial profit. You're not going to grow unless you start focusing on social media. Now, if you're focusing on social media and you need your own private place to actually start doing like podcasts and start doing content, you need a quiet. Like for me, being in a barbershop now trying to make content is, is actually kind of hard now because now it's like, where do I find the time to actually like before I was able to do it before before cuts, I come in early, stay later. Now it's like I come in early, the guys are there. I stay a little bit later, the guys are there. Like between cuts, it's loud. It's yeah. like where do I find time to make content, right? And so right. it's like so there's pros and cons. So if you're doing pro, if you're trying to do social media, sweets is gonna work out for you because you you're making your income, but then also you have time and a place to do content. Um, so it's a little bit harder in the barbershop. Um, but I think it, whatever works for you, whatever works, there's pros and cons to both. But I really like the barbershop as someone who's trying to start and someone who's trying to build. Man, barbershop is where it's at, man. You want to leverage the other time. You want to leverage that barbershop. What I mean by leverage that barbershop, the shop owner, the way he markets, the way he, you know, the way walk-ins, people come in. There's nothing like a storefront barbershop where people see the sign barbershop and they walk in, mm -hmm. right? And so there's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. And so... I saw two comments that popped up and said, how do I uh, keep my Mondays and, and Wednesday leverage? How, what advice would you give me to keep those days busy? Well, it's availability, man. So what happens is once you grow your, once you grow your clientele base, people will start filling up on those days. Mm -hmm. You just got to grow grow your clientele base. Um, so my strategy is this, like if you see people, um, so if you have a clientele base and they're taking up your th Fridays and Saturdays, give an incentive saying, hey, man, if you work, if you book an appointment on 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 Tuesdays and Wednesdays, um, go ahead and I'm going to give you like a discount. I'm going to give you 15, 20 percent, you know, five dollars off on your haircut if you come in on these days, even if it's half. I don't know. You got to figure that out. So you can leave the Saturdays and Fridays open so you can go ahead and get the ability to take walk ins and grow your clientele right that's the only reason those days are slow is because your clientele is not full once your clientele it begins full people are going to start booking on those days uh -huh. people are going to start booking on those because those are your clients and those are the days that they can get in so they'd rather get in with you on those days than go somewhere else so those days are going to be full because your clientele is full you have a lot of clientele does, so does that make that. sense <laughs> it makes sense to me <laughs> yeah yeah okay okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, me and one of my um, comrades was having uh, a conversation, and I, I also seen this on, I think it was called the Barber's Page, and he was speaking on um, now the different leverages that's changing on the barbering license, as far as like if you're, and I, I think what I, the information I, I gathered was that if you're not at a barber shop full time, and that. I think that they're going to ask for the barbershop's information to be placed on your, your license to show that, that you're actually in that shop making, I guess, make, make, that you're doing the service and you're making money for that to be recognized on your taxes. I don't know if you, you, you heard that per se. I have not heard that. I haven't yeah. heard that. That's wild. Yeah, so I think that's just the guy that's trying to capitalize and tax people. Hmm? Yeah, I, I haven't heard that. Yeah, I think it's another way to like kind of limit the the entrepreneurship when it comes to the the the, the whole per se of like I have a barber license, I can cut wherever I want to cut. So now they're trying to change change the that that narrative to be like, no, you have to be per se in a shop for this to be so be lucrative to say that you know you're you're making income and right. this is what. Yeah, I feel like that's what they're trying to do. And that's why they probably lowered the limit. They lowered the standard of getting your barbershop license. Mm -hmm. So it could be easier to get your barbershop license so they can capitalize on that. So they can tax it. I think that's what they're doing. They're setting that up. Because I remember when I was in California, they were talking about that you weren't able to, um, like, uh, you weren't able to have an open barbershop. They had to be leased out. Each station had to be its own individual. They're trying to structure it some kind of way. But I don't know if that's a California thing. I know it's not like that in Arizona. Okay. Yeah, it might be be a california thing bro you know what i'm saying you know california they try to they try to tax you any way they can bro anyway 100 <laughs> uh 
How do you feel about like the the barber as far as not having union? Like, do, or is like in your location? Do you have a union? Of no, the barber? no union. Yeah, yeah. I, I really don't know, man. I've never been a part of a union, yeah. so I, I know there's some pros and cons um, to everything. But I don't. I've never been a part of a union. I don't know the whole benefit of it. Um, yeah, man. I don't. I don't know. Even people in the union. Some people don't even like the union that they're in the union. They gotta pay the dues. <laughs> And the fees and they're not getting the full benefit right so it's, it comes down to politics it comes i don't know I, I i like the way it is everybody's responsible for themselves you know what i'm saying like you you should be responsible for yourself right how uh, is has any of the i guess schooling changed uh, as far as like what you have heard as far as the hours like for you to go you know go to school the hour has it changed over there and then as far as when you go take the test i know out here we don't have to take the um, the practical anymore. You just take the written. So has anything like that changed out there for you guys? Uh, I'm not too sure out here because I've only been out here for two years. Okay. So I got all my stuff in California. So I've got my license in California. And uh, I heard they changed um, a lot in California too. So, yeah. I think my class was like, I got my, uh, I think I was the last class that actually brought in a live model. Like I was like one of the last classes, the last time period where you brought in a life model and you performed a haircut and a, and a beard <laughs> shave on the model. Yeah. So. Yeah, times have changed, man. Times have changed. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, uh, one of my, like, my last questions, and I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you do your thing. And I also want to say thank you for coming to my platform. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you, you jumped on here and you, and you delivered. So I really appreciate that. Um, I always leave my guests with this, and you let me know if you want me to give you more but law of attraction, how's that work for you as far as like the industry you in, as far as you know, your family, everything, like how do you capitalize on law of attraction? Uh, I'm really not, I, I, I mean, I don't know about the law of attraction. I haven't really focused on law of attraction, um, but I do believe in being positive in the positive mindset and always looking for a positive, you know, always, whatever you're doing, man, you want to stay positive and you want to go put your foot in the right direction. And so it really doesn't matter really the outcome or what you're going through. You just got to just, just go after and get it, man. Don't give up. You got to be relentless. You know what I'm saying? No matter what it is, no matter what it is, if you're just relentless and you just, you just go out and get it and say, you know what, I'm going to get this. No matter what says in my way, I'm going I'm to run through it. I'm going to get this. I mean, I feel you're going to get it. 100%. And you've been, yeah. you been, everybody that came on here and loved, you know, the conversation. I saw a lot of people tune in. I saw a lot of people leave some comments. So I just want to say thank you again, man. This was awesome. Oh, we can connect again and do some more major, yeah, sure. you know, with what you got going on and what I'm building. And, man, thank you. Yeah, yeah man, thank you, brother. I appreciate you for a lot. Anytime that anybody asks me for to come on their platform, man, I'm, if I can do it, I'd love to be on there, man. I'd like to show love. I like to elevate. Yeah. I like to help each other out, man. That's what it's all about, bro. Yeah. And so, uh, Barber Unity, man. We got we to keep pushing this going, man. We all, if we all, talk, if, I'm always, if I'm always talking about it and I never do it, I mean, it's just, you know, it's hypocritical, man. You know what I'm saying? So, it's always about that love, man, that Barber love for real. Hell yeah. All right. Thank you, boss. Have a great day, man. All right, brother. Take it easy, man. Thank Thank you, guys. And thank you for allowing me to be on your platform. Seriously, brother. No, this is awesome, man. I appreciate it. All right, G. All right, man. Have a good one. All right, brother. You too.